Today you'll learn two simple ways to turn any photo into a beautiful watercolor painting in Photoshop. The first method uses some simple brushes and filter effects, while the second uses a Photoshop action that creates a much more realistic result. So be sure to stick around until the end of this tutorial to see how this action works and how you can get it for yourself to make this entire watercolor process even easier. Now once you're inside of Photoshop to bring your image into the program, just go to File, Open, and then select your desired file file that you want to apply this watercolor effect to. Now for our first technique of this watercolor effect, we're going to be using a variety of filters and to ensure that we can always go back and edit our filters later on, we need to first convert our layer into a smart object. So before we do anything with the background layer or your image layer, we'll want to duplicate it. So with my background layer selected, I'll press command or control J to duplicate that layer. Now with this duplicated layer, I'll double click on the name and call this to watercolor. To ensure that all of the filters that we apply onto this layer can be edited, we need to convert this to a smart object by right clicking on that layer and going to convert to smart object. You'll see this icon appear above your image layer thumbnail, meaning that your layer is now a smart object. This also means that it's time to go and apply our first filter. So with the watercolor layer selected, we'll go up to filter and then down here to filter gallery. Clicking on this will open up a new window where we have a bunch of different options here, but the one we're going to choose is the dry brush setting. Now what this setting does is basically gives your photo a more painterly look, and we have a few sliders that we can adjust to make this effect a little more customized. So with our setting here set to dry brush, we'll set the brush size up here to the maximum of 10. We'll go to our brush detail and set that to a maximum of 10 as well. So that way we can see a little bit more of the details in the background here. And finally, for the texture, we'll leave this set to one so that we have sort of a smooth painterly effect that looks a little bit more like a watercolor painting. So with this complete, we'll click OK. Next, we're going to add an additional filter from our filter gallery. So with the watercolor layer still selected in our layer, panel, we'll go up to filter and filter gallery once again. This time we'll go and select the cutout option within the artistic folder. So clicking on the cutout option here, essentially what this cutout effect will do is take your colors and simplify them a little bit so that it looks a little bit more like a painting and has some of those similar brush effects that you see in like a watercolor painting. So again, with the cutout option set up here, we'll set the number of levels to eight. If we have a lower amount here, you can see how it just makes the colors look a little weird. So having this at eight will make all the colors in your photo look more close to how they actually looked in the image. As for the edge simplicity, we'll set this to zero so that we still have lots of textures and things in our photo. If we increase this really high, you can see that it just simplifies the colors and textures in our photo a little bit more. But for our effects, we just want this to be at zero so that we can still see all of the details in the image. Now, finally, the edge fidelity setting will leave set to two. Now we'll go and click OK to commit to those changes. So now we have two different filters applied onto our image. However, to make these blend together a little bit more, we're going to lower the opacity of the cutout filter that we just applied. So the cutout filter is the topmost filter gallery option here. So we'll go over and click on this icon right here, double clicking on that of the topmost filter gallery option here. This will open up the blending options for our cutout adjustment. Here we have an opacity slider that we can click on and I'll bring this down to around 50 50% to just make that effect feel a little bit less intense. So we're still getting that painterly effect, but it's not ruining the details in our photo. So this looks good around here and I'll click okay. Depending on your image, you might have to use a slightly different opacity, but 50% is generally a good starting point. Now at this point, our image is looking pretty good, but there isn't any clear edges. So let's go and add some brush strokes or essentially lines around all the edges in our photo using another filter. With the watercolor layer still selected, we'll go up to filter, down here to stylize, and then to find edges. Clicking on that will turn your photo into this crazy looking thing, which is obviously not what we're wanting, but we can blend this in using a layer blending mode for our filter adjustment. So with the find edges filter here below our smart filters, we'll go over to this icon directly across from the find edges words here. So double clicking on the topmost icon here, 
This will open up the settings for that adjustment, as you see here, and I'll change the mode to multiply, which will remove all of the white from our adjustment and only leave the dark pixels left over, which is essentially how we get all these lines. If any of the lines feel a little too intense, you can go to the opacity slider and then drag this down to suit your taste, depending on how visible or not visible you want your lines to be. In this case, I actually like the added contrast that those lines add, particularly around the road. So I'll set this to 85% and I'll click OK. Now our image is looking pretty good and we're starting to get that watercolor effect. But to make it look really realistic, we need to have a watercolor texture so that it looks like it was applied onto paper. You can find watercolor paper textures on sites like Pexels or Unsplash.com. And the one that I'll be using, I'll leave a link for below this video. Once you have that paper texture file downloaded to your computer, just go to File and then place embedded and that will add that photo into your project. Otherwise, you can just drag and drop the file into your project like so and it will add the image there as a new layer. I'll call this layer two paper texture. Now with our paper texture layer selected, we want to rotate it so that it's fitting across our entire image. So I'll grab my move tool by pressing V and then I'll just hover outside of the corner, drag around like so, hold the shift key so it locks to 90 degrees and then I will scale up this paper texture like so to fit across the entire image. I'll press the check mark to save those changes. Now, obviously this is blocking the entire painting. So we're going to set the layer blending mode from normal and then go down here to multiply. So that will blend the texture of that paper into our photo. And if I zoom in, you can see that there's sort of this papery texture across the entire image now. Pressing command or control zero to zoom out. Now we're going to add some watercolor brush effects around the edge of our image. But before we do that, we need to add a secondary paper texture below our watercolor layer. Luckily, this is really easy to do by first clicking on your paper texture layer, pressing command or control J to duplicate that layer. Then with this duplicated layer selected, I'll set the layer blending mode from multiply back here to normal. And then I'll click and drag this new paper texture copy layer below my watercolor layer with all these smart filters. You'll see why in just a moment here. Now let's go and add some brush effects around the edge of our photo. Clicking on the watercolor layer, I'll first add a layer mask by clicking the layer mask icon down here. Now we need to go grab our brush tool by pressing B. And if you don't have any watercolor brushes, then you can actually download a bunch of them from Adobe for free just by clicking on the brush preset picker here, going to the gear icon, and then going down here to get more brushes. Once you go to that page, you'll just have to sign into your Adobe account. And then you'll see something like this that you can just click download on, and then you can import those brushes into Photoshop. Once you have those brushes imported, you'll have exactly what I have here, which is this watercolor folder. And then there's heaps and heaps of brushes that you can choose from. Now, just make sure that you're using the brushes that have the actual brush icon beside them and not the ones with the eraser beside them, because those are two different things. So choosing any of these brushes that have the brush icon beside them, we're going to use these to basically selectively hide the edges of this watercolor image. So for this example, let's go and try this soft edge natural brush here. I'll close up my brush preset panel and make sure that my foreground color is set to black down here. Now making sure that my layer mask is selected indicated by that white box around my layer mask. With black still set to my foreground color, I'll scale up my brush using my bracket keys. And now I can just go and paint around the edges of my photo like so. If you click around your image, you'll often get a little bit more textures than clicking and dragging but you can do a little bit of both to blend in these effects as you'd like. So I'm just gonna to continue to paint around here until I'm happy with the results that I'm getting from this particular brush. You might have to go back and forth with scaling your brush up and down using the bracket keys to just create a nice faded and textured look around your image like this. With these brush adjustments complete, let's go and try a different brush. I'll click on my brush preset picker and now I'll try the soft edge irregular brushes down here. This time we'll go and make some adjustments on the other side of my photo with my foreground color still set to black down here, my layer mask still selected on the watercolor layer. I'll scale up my brush by using my bracket keys and then I'll just go and click and drag around this other part of my photo here to selectively remove some of the image and make it look like it's fading out with our watercolor adjustments. 
So that's looking pretty good to me right there. And now I'm happy with this effect. Let's look at our before and after really quickly before we go on to our second example using the watercolor actions. Holding Alt or Option, I'll click on the eyeball icon of the background layer. Turning that on and off, you can see how we've added this really awesome and stylized watercolor effect just using some free brushes from Adobe as well as some simple filter effects and layer blending modes to make it all come together. Now this effect looks pretty nice and I think it does look very much like a watercolor painting, but I think you'll be blown away by the results that this watercolor action does that I'll show you next. Starting fresh with the same image as before, this time I'm going to go to the actions panel by clicking on the actions panel here. If you don't see the actions panel, just go up to window and down here to actions. And then inside this panel, I have my real watercolor actions here with a few different settings that we can start with. Now again, these watercolor actions are an extra thing for Photoshop that I have available below this video. I'm just showing you how this works and how easy these effects are to create. So clicking on the watercolor setup action of the real watercolor, I'll click on the play icon with my image layer selected. This creates two new layers that we just need to quickly paint a couple colors on to help create our effect. So with my sketch area layer selected, I'll go and paint over all of the areas that I basically just want to have some lines and artistic effects in the final result. Then I'll click on my watercolor area layer. I'll change my foreground color to a different color. It doesn't matter which color it is but I'm gonna do white just so it's easier to see. And now I'll paint over the areas that I want the watercolor effect to be applied. So primarily around the little train car here and part of the street. Now with this complete, obviously this doesn't look very good, but the action does the rest of the work for us. So going to the real watercolor action, I'll press play on that. And now Photoshop will work its magic here. This might take a minute to process depending on the specs of your computer, but what you end up with is pretty insane. And there's a bunch of ways to customize it as you'll see in just a moment. I'll let this action run through and I'll meet you when it is complete. Now that took about a minute for the action to run through but it's because there is literally so many things that it does for us here in the layers panel and the final result that we get here is pretty awesome. But you can go through all of these pre-made folders and you can basically click the eyeball icon or change the opacity of certain layers to customize this effect. So for example, in the 20 color effects folder that is automatically created with this action, if I scroll through here, I can click on the eyeball icon of any of these adjustments to add different color effects onto this watercolor painting, basically just to suit my style a little bit better. And there is quite a few different options that you can choose from. In this case, I actually do like that blue red tint, so I will keep that one there. Scrolling up to close that group. We'll next go to our sketch elements and inside of these groups, we can adjust how all of these lines look around our photo. So for example, if you don't like certain lines and you want to just hide them from your effect, you can easily do that in these groups as well. So clicking on the eyeball icons here to see which lines are in which group, I want to remove this outer line, this outer circular line from my image. So I believe that's gonna be in this group right here. So that means I can click on the folder of this group to open it up and then go and find that specific adjustment on that layer to go ahead and hide it. So as you can see here, this layer is the one with the outline. So I can just click the eyeball icon to hide that and now it's no longer in view. Now with just a couple of adjustments there to customize the look of this effect, I have something a little bit different from the base result and I was able to get rid of those things that I didn't really like from the final result. We also have some extra settings down below for the watercolor paper that this image is on because this action automatically creates paper effects for you. So you don't need to go and find them online. Instead, all you need to do is just click on the eyeball icons of these different paper textures down at the bottom so you can add a couple different colors of paper down here, as well as if you wanna have a custom color for your background, you can use the background color option, double click on that color fill, and we can go and change the color of our watercolor paper background super easily, just like this, using the color picker of this background fill layer. That way you can get some really customized results and have things blend in with other colors that are already in your photo, for example. This is a really fun way to customize the effect and is one of my first adjustments that I like to do with this action. But for this case, I actually do prefer the white, so I'll just leave that set to white and I'll click OK. 
Now let's take a look at that before and after. Holding the Alt or Option key of my original image layer, holding Alt or Option to hide all the layers except for that one, you can see how easy that was to create an effect that is super realistic. It looks just like a watercolor painting and it has all those extra details that weren't easily created with the first method that we discussed. And all we really had to do was add two brush strokes and then press play on the action and everything was done for us. So this is definitely my preferred way of creating watercolor effects in Photoshop. But of course, the first method that we talked about earlier definitely gets the job done too, and it doesn't require anything extra inside of Photoshop. Now, if you want to get your hands on this watercolor action for Photoshop, I'll leave a link for it down below this video. In this watercolor action bundle, you'll also get 35 bonus watercolor brushes that are all optically captured, meaning they have some extra details and textures that some other watercolor brushes just don't have. There's also a variety of watercolor backgrounds for simple drag and drop effects or blank watercolor paper textures you can use in other projects too. Plus there is a downloadable video lesson from my friend and creator of this action, Gavin Phillips, walking you through how to get the best results from these actions. So just click the link below this video to learn more about those actions if you're interested. But anyways, thanks for stopping by and I'll see you in the next one.